In this video, I will discuss Wilcoxon rank sum test. This test is a non-parametric test. It is used to compare if there is a significant difference between two independent groups. This is the counterpart of the t-test under the parametric test. When do we use Wilcoxon rank sum test? We use it when the sample size is very small. When the distribution is abnormal, and when we compare the means of two independent groups. How do we use Wilcoxon rank sum test? We have steps to follow. First, rank the observations from the lowest value to the highest value of both groups. Second, after ranking, assign the rank to the respective observation. Third, Add the ranks of group 1, which is W sub 1. Then, add the ranks of group 2, which is W sub 2. Fifth, determine the number of observation in group 1 and group 2, that is, N sub 1 and N sub 2 respectively. And also, use the formula. For group 1, U sub 1 is equal to W sub 1 minus n sub 1 times the quantity n sub 1 plus 1 all over 2. Then for group 2, that is u sub 2 is equal to w sub 2 minus n sub 2 times the quantity n sub 2 plus 1 all over 2. Where u sub 1 and u sub 2 are the Wilcoxon rank sum test, w sub 1 is the sum of ranks of group 1, N sub 1 is the sample size of group 1, W sub 2 is the sum of ranks of group 2, and N sub 2 is the sample size of group 2. For example, of the 18 selected patients who had advanced stage of leukemia, 10 were treated with a new serum and 8 were not. The survival time in years was reckoned from the time the experiment was conducted. Using the Wilcoxon rank sum test at alpha is equal to 0 0.05 to test whether the serum is effective. Consider the following data. So we have here a table which shows 10 patients with treatment and 8 patients with no treatment together with their corresponding survival time in years from the time the experiment was conducted. Solving now by stepwise method, first is to identify the problem. The problem is, is the new serum effective in treating leukemia? Then, formulate your hypothesis. First is the null hypothesis. The new serum is not effective. Then, for the alternative hypothesis, the new serum is effective. And for the levels of significance, we have alpha, which is given on the problem, which is equal to 0 0.05. For the degrees of freedom, for n sub 1 or group 1, we have 10. Then for group 2 or n sub 2, that is equal to 8. Then get the u tabular value at 0 0.05. So in here, we'll be using the u table. So we have here the U table. On the leftmost part of the table, we have the degrees of freedom for N sub 1. And on the upper part, we have the degrees of freedom for N sub 2. For N sub 1, we have 10. Then for N sub 2, we have 8. Then get their intersection. So their intersection is 17. Therefore, U tabular value at 0 0.05 is equal to 17. And next is the statistics. First, we need to arrange the data of both groups from the lowest to the highest value and rank them. We have here a table which shows the observations from both groups, wherein from these observations, these were arranged in ascending manner or that is from lowest value up to the highest value. 
So from the given data, 0.5 is the lowest value followed by 0.9, then 1.7, 1.9, 2.0, and another 2.0, and so on. Then, set up their corresponding ranks. So 0.5 is rank 1, 0.9 is rank 2, 1.7 is rank 3, 1.9 is rank 4. Then, as you can see, we have 2, 2.0. Zero. So, these two data shared the ranks 5 and 6. If so, then get the mean of the ranks. That is 5 plus 6, which is 11, then divide it by 2, that is 5.5. Then, 2.2 will be rank 7, 2.5 is rank 8, and so on. So, if there are two or more same data, just get the mean of the ranks they have shared. Then, let us go back with the original data. As we can see, we have here the data with treatment and the data with no treatment. Then, on the right part, we have the column for the corresponding ranks. So, 2.9 is rank 9, 3.1 is rank 10.5, 5.3 is rank 18, and so on. Then, get the sum of their ranks. That is the rank of group 1 which is W sub 1 which is equal to 130. Then, do the same process with no treatment. Set their corresponding ranks, then get the sum of the ranks, that is W sub 2 is equal to 41. Then we already have the necessary values, then we can now compute for U sub 1 and U sub 2. First is to compute for U sub 1. So we have the computed sum of ranks of group 1, that is 130 and the number of observations of group 1 that is 10. Then substitute these values into the formula that is u sub 1 is equal to 130 minus 10 times the quantity 10 plus 1 all over 2. Then simplify further that is u sub 1 is equal to 130 minus 110 all over 2. Then, 130 minus 55, u sub 1 now is equal to 75. Next is to compute for u sub 2 or the Wilcoxon rank sum test for group 2. So, we have the following data. The sum of ranks of group 2 is equal to 41. Then, the number of observations for group 2 is equal to 8. Then, substitute this for this data in the formula, u sub 2 now is equal to 41 minus 8 times the quantity 8 plus 1 all over 2. Then simplify, that is 41 minus 72 all over 2, which is equal to 41 minus 36 and u sub 2 is equal to 5. Then it's now time for us to have the decision rule. First, we need to select the smaller value from U sub 1 and U sub 2. So the computed value for U sub 1 is equal to 75. Then for U sub 2, that is 5. So the smaller value is 5. Therefore, we need to consider 5. If the U computed value is less than or equal to the tabular value, this confirm HO. Then, it's now time for us to make a conclusion. Since the U sub 2 computed value of 5 is less than the U tabular value of 17 at 0 0.05 level of significance with N sub 1 is 10 and N sub 2 is 8 degrees of freedom, the null hypothesis is 
rejected in favor of the research hypothesis that the new serum is effective. It implies that patients treated with new serum live longer compared with the patients who were not treated with the new serum. That is the Wilcoxon rank sum test. Thank you for watching and I hope you have learned something.